Hello and welcome. If you're watching this video, this is probably your introduction to Algebra 1. You don't know much about it, and you're kind of scared of algebra. It's this big, new, massive thing, and you're worried about it. Well, don't worry. A lot of algebra is what you've already been doing. Arithmetic. Adding, subtracting, dividing, multiplying numbers. If you were given a worksheet that said, asked you, what's 1 plus 3? You'd say, that's not bad. I know that's 4. Right? They are, they're often written like this. 1 plus 3 equals question. An unknown quantity that you, that you have to find the answer to. Well, algebra is all about dealing with unknown quantities. We, we use symbols to represent these unknown qualities. In, in mathematics, that's called a variable. Usually, we use no letters. X, Y, Z, A, and B, and all the letters in the alphabet to represent, un to represent these variables, or unknown quantities. So to rewrite this equation in algebraic form, or style, we'd say 1 plus 3 equals x. And in this case, and in any case, we want to find the value of this unknown qu quantity, this variable. In algebra, we call this solving for the unknown. You might look at it and say, hey, 1 plus 3 is 4. That means 4 equals x, which means, hey, x equals 4. That's a very basic algebraic equation. We have a, have a variable that repre represents a number that we don't know, and we try to solve it, solve it using the basic rules of arithmetic. Let's do another example. Say I add 5 plus x equals 10. You might say, OK, well, this looks kind of scary. I've got this x in the middle right now. Before, I had 1 plus 3 equals x, and I could just do 1 plus 3, and I get x. But now I have 5 plus x. Well, how do I find the answer if I don't know what x is? I can't add an unknown to 5. That doesn't make any sense. Well, think about it this way. What plus 5 equals 10? We know, we know that this mystery number here, x, when we add it to 5, we get 10. What number will work for that? We see 5 plus 5 equals 10. So we say, oh, x must equal 5. See, we're basically following the same rules of arithmetic. However, there are a few exceptions that you have to be especially aware of when dealing with algebra. First, variables in a single problem can be, can, cannot have, have different values. For example, if I had x plus x equals 6, there are many possible values that I can add up to to be 6. I can have 1 plus 5 equals 6, 2 plus 4 equals 6, and 3 plus 3 equals 6. But x is a single variable, right? We can't have x equal to 1 and to 5. It doesn't make any sense. x has to be equal to a single value. So what we're really asking is, what number, when I add it to itself, will get me 6? And all of these problems we have listed here, the only number we see that works for this is 3. So x equals 3. However, a single variable can represent different values across multiple different equations. For example, if I had two separate problems, 1 plus 3 equals x, and 5 plus x equals 10, right? And these are, if these were two separate problems, and we found that, hey, x, x, x equals 5 here, and x equals 4 here, that's OK. Our x can equal different values in different problems. They just can't equal the different values in the same problem. Now, for notation, with all these new number letters inter intermixing with all the numbers, you might think, can I still do x minus y? I know I can do 3 minus 1 or 6 minus 2, but we've got variables now. Is that allowed? Don't worry. When it comes to symbols, your arithmetic symbols, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, it's mostly the same, with some slight modifications. 
right? So let's let's make a t uh, let's make a t chart, right? I can do one plus three, one minus three, one divided by three, or one divided by three, or one times three. What's the algebra equivalent for each of these? I'm going to use x and y as my algebraic variables. Well, for most, it's the exact same. x plus y, x minus y, x over y. When it comes to multipl multiplication, we have to use a slightly different method. We, doing x, x, y doesn't really make sense, right? We have an x that's our variable, then our x that's our multiplication sign. And that can get a little confusing. So, when we're multiplying, we take our variables and we sort of smush them together into a single, a single section, what we in algebra call a term. So instead of doing x, x, y, we're just doing, going to do x, y. We combine the variables together, right? And you might ask, well, what does that mean when I find the values of those variables, right? What if, I, what if I'm told that, hey, x equals 1 and x equals 3, find x, y. Well, don't worry. We can just plug those values in. 1 times 3. And that's 3. So nothing to worry about. Just a little notation thing that can kind of trip you up. Whenever you see two variables combined, that just means that they're multiplied together. And we do that just to avoid confusion with this little x here. Now, that's the fundamental basics of algebra. In this course, we're going to dive deep into everything you need to know about Algebra 1. That's all I have. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.